Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make my DIY modeling compound. A lot of you guys have asked about this in previous videos, so I thought I'll show you through the full recipe here today. So let's jump into it. To make the modeling compound, you'll need toilet paper, water, plaster of Paris, grout, a blender, and some containers to keep it all in. Modeling compound is one of the single most useful items in the terrain building hobby in my experience and will make a massive difference to any build that you have going forward. The main ingredient for this is toilet paper. So we're gonna grab an old roll. If you've got one that's gotten wet or ruined, they're perfect since we're gonna soak these anyway. Next up, I'm gonna grab a serrated knife. I find these easier just for hacking through it and start cutting it into pieces. It can take some work, but once we've hacked through it there, we have a nice base piece. I'm now going to grab a container of some sort and start tearing it up even more as I throw it into the container. The more you separate it out, the better the end result will be and the less work it's gonna be down the line. So for now, we just keep tearing up TP. And now that we have our shredded up paper, it's time to add a couple of cups of water. We really wanna make sure that all of the paper towel gets completely soaked through as this is going to break it up and make it even easier to break down to the next level. The longer you leave this to soak, the better, and some people even boil this. A few moments later, and now that that's been given some time to soak, it's time for the fun part. Hmm. One minute. All right, and now that's had time to soak, it's time to bust out the little hand blender. I got this one for about 12 bucks from Kmart. You can probably get them cheaper somewhere else, but this one does the trick for me. We just start blending. The more blended up that we get it at this point, the better off it's gonna be down the line, but this is probably good enough. I'm gonna give it a little bit more and then we'll drain it out. All right, now we can put that away for now. We're gonna need that later on for the dried up section. But for now, we can start scooping this stuff out. piling these up to dry. I'm sure there's a better way to get through this part, but as for right now, I don't know it. So I'll take my time slowly squeezing out all of this paper and getting rid of as much moisture as I possibly can. So I basically go back and forth between just squashing it out with my hands and then pressing it through this stuff here. then we end up with a little ball of paper. Ugh. I'm making a mess, that's for sure. Quick wipe down. And so you can see how we turn this stuff into these little balls of wet, mushed up paper grind. Now we're gonna go through and pull these apart as best we can. Don't have to be too accurate with this just enough so they dry out a little bit easier and it helps to let all the moisture escape. Obviously, once you get through the whole roll, you'll have a lot more than this, but I just can't be bothered going through the whole lot right now. I'll do that off camera later on. And once you've shredded those up, you end up with something like this. You'll have a lot more once you've gone through the full toilet paper roll, but I have a large section that I haven't been bothered to pull apart yet. So we'll dry those out and get them going later on off camera. But for now, let's get this drying. So we can throw this out in the sun for a day or two and it'll dry out perfectly well. Or if you're running low on time, you can put it in the oven at a low heat. Just make sure to check on it constantly because it is small pieces of paper. And once they dry out, this could easily catch fire. Well, let's test it out, shall we? We'll go 80 degrees 
fan and see how that goes. Now, while that first batch dries out, we can move on to the next stage with some that I prepared earlier. So this stuff was left out in the sun for a couple of days to dry and has become a nice basic dried out shredded paper. So using this, we can move on to the next stage in the process. For that, we're going to need another larger container. This one needs to have some kind of lid and I'd recommend getting something deep because there's gonna be a lot of dust coming off this one. Then we're gonna grab some plaster of Paris and some grout color. This stuff is just gonna add a little bit of extra color to the mix so it's not just pure white. So anywhere that chips away or loses any of the detail over time or that we miss in the painting won't stand out too obviously. So what we're gonna do is throw the dried up paper straight into the container. And now grabbing this mixer again, making sure that the end is bone dry as we don't wanna add any moisture into this early on as that is what causes the process to set. So we want this to be as dry as possible. We'll grab some power. And as we did earlier, we're just gonna grind this up a bit. Really doing the trick. One hour later. Okay, so this thing didn't really help me here. You could probably get there with a lot of work, but I just ran down to Kmart and picked up a coffee grinder. I tested it out already, and this thing does a much better job. Give that a quick shake. Then we have a nice fluffy powdered paper. So let's do this to the rest of it. If you're going to be using kitchen utensils like this for crafting, make sure that you either clean them thoroughly or you just buy some cheap ones specifically for your crafting needs. Shops like Kmart in Australia or Walmart would probably be perfect for this. Okay, so now we have a heap of fluffy shredded up paper for our modeling compound, which is the perfect base. There's still a little bit of moisture in this, so I'm gonna sit it to dry for a little bit and come back and finish it up shortly. A few moments later. All right, so that's had a little bit more time to dry out. In an ideal world, I'd leave that for a couple of days, but I want to be using this stuff for a build this afternoon. So next up, I'm going to add a heap of plaster of Paris. This stuff is ultimately the agent that's going to make it set hard. And the paper, I think, just helps to hold everything together and give it a bit more of a random shape. I'm just gonna dump pretty much the last of what I've got left in here. Ideally, you'd go about one part paper to one part plaster, but I think I'm gonna be just short of that. Now we want this really well mixed through. Whew, it's gonna start producing some dust. But before we do that, I'm going to jump into this section here and grab some grout coloring. This stuff's great because the grout is a small enough scale that it looks like a nice textured finish for miniatures and displays. So I'm gonna add some darker grays into this with a couple of small variations to help add some color and texture to the finish in the end. And now we seal this up nice and tight and give it a shake. She's still kicking off dust. And once that's sufficiently shaken through and you've got everything mixed up nicely, you now have your finished modeling compound. When you're ready to actually use this, you just mix in some glue and water, mix it up thoroughly and throw it down on your build. You'll get about a 10 minute work time before the stuff starts to dry and then you can smooth it out. Give it about a day to let it fully harden and you'll have a beautifully natural earth surface. If you'd like to see how I've used this compound in some other builds, here are some examples. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with this. Share your builds with me at any of the social medias in the description. And until next time, never stop making stuff. Thank you.